The next two lessons will be focusing on the idea of rate of change. The first one will be focusing on average rate of change and then we'll be focusing on instantaneous rate of change. If you've taken physics then you're actually very familiar with these ideas and if you haven't think back to grade 9 math actually um, because when we talked about the line we found the slope of a line and we said that the slope of the line is also the rate of change. And don't, for, don't forget uh, about the distant time graphs that you studied. We wrote a story and you talked about how fast someone was going. That was all rate of change. So uh, let's take a look at this beautiful picture I have here. So I have uh, what looks like to be a parabola and I've drawn a secant. Okay, so what is a secant? A secant is a line that cuts through your graph at a minimum of minimum of two points okay so two is a very special number in this case because if you think back to grade nine the, um, the what you need to find the slope of a line is two points remember slope is rise over run or y sub 2 minus y sub 1 all over x sub 2 minus x sub 1 nonetheless you need to be able to find the slope of the secant because the slope of the secant is actually going to give us the average rate of change. Now, how does that work? Well, if, if your graph was actually just a line, imagine your graph was actually the secant line. Okay, so try to ignore the parabola line. Then you would say that the rate of change is constant. Okay, and the average rate of change is equal to the slope of the... Uh, of the line. Now what you have here is not a line, you have a parabola. Okay, so if you were focusing on these two points, why is it that the slope of the secant going to give us the av average rate of change? Because you're basically, when you join these points using a line, you're ignoring everything that happens in the middle. Okay, everything that happens here, you don't really care which makes sense because you're talking about average rate of change. So if you're imagining uh, you are driving to school, okay? So, you know what? I actually drove to, to a pizza hut today and got some pizza. And I actually um, looked at some numbers to help with the lesson. So I went to pizza hut um, and it took me, the whole trip took me about, I don't know, let's say 15 minutes. Okay, and the distance was, the total distance was, uh, let's say, uh, six kilometers. Okay, and I was actually pretty sad because when I saw my average speed, I was like, wow, I'm not going nearly as fast as I thought I was going. I mean, this trip was actually really slow. Um, I don't encourage speeding, but at the same time, it was really slow. So when you drive to school, you, I want you to think about the average speed because some cars are able to tell you your average uh, speed for the entire trip. So my average was actually really low. Uh, that's not to say I was going really slow the whole way through, but you know what, I'll, 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 I'll uh, explain later, but I really want to do this calculation first. So that's a quarter of an hour. So six divided by quarter is six times four, which is, 24. So if you, you know what, this is kilometers per hour. So, you know what, I'll show you the calculations on the next page anyway. So, so 24 kilometers per hour. So I was looking at it, I was like, wow, 24 kilometers per hour, that's really, really slow. Um, I couldn't believe it. Uh, actually, on my um, on the on the screen, uh, it said thirty something kilometers per hour. But anyways, it was still really slow. So that doesn't mean I'm going twenty four kilometers per hour the whole way through. I'm not, you know. I mean, people were gonna be really angry behind me if I was driving at that speed. But this is the average speed, because why is why is it so low? Because I was stopped at many many red lights, and. That's why on average, it was, it was only 24 kilometers per hour. Okay, so your actual average speed for a trip is probably much lower than what you think. Because when you're going, yeah, you're going pretty fast. You're going 60 or 70 kilometers per hour. 
But once you hit a red light, you stop there for perhaps, let's say, 30 seconds. And for that duration, you're, you're at zero kilometers per hour. You're not moving. So that's why we connect the dots here. We don't care how fast you're going in the middle of a trip, if you've stopped, if you're speeding, if you know, you're going backwards. No, we, we're, we're not, we're not, um, we're not uh, looking into that. All we care is that um, on average, your speed is, um, yeah, let's say 24 kilometers per hour. So you only care about the total distance covered and the time elapsed. Okay, in the next lesson, the it will be an instantaneous rate of change, and that's when you care about the exact details of what's happening in the middle. But right now, we're just looking at the grand scheme of things, the average rate of change. Okay, so slope is rate of change, and when we find a slope of the secant, it becomes average rate of change. So Haley is 74 centimeters tall when she is one year old. Uh, she is 121 centimeters tall when she's six years old. What is the average rate of change of height uh, from one to six years old? So average rate of change, we're going to do 121 minus 74 over 6 minus 1. Okay, so the change in height over the change in time. So we're looking at 9 and 4. Now the unit is critical when we talk about rate of change, okay? So I'll do that in my therefore statement. So therefore, uh, the average rate of change of height from one to six years old is 9.4 centimeters per year. So on average, she's growing about 9.4 centimeters per year. Okay, so, but if you focus on, on, on the height of Haley, there will be times where she's, she has a growth spur. Okay, maybe for several months, her, her, her height is, is growing dramatically, and then she plateaus, and then she has another growth spur. Okay, but what this calculation does, it doesn't, it, it evens everything out. Okay, it averages everything out. So on average, it's 9.4 centimeters per year. Okay, what's happening exactly at two years old? Who knows? Okay, but we don't care. We just care about the big picture. All right, let's see another one. A toy rocket uh, is launch height H is in meters. Uh, what's the average rate of change of the height of the rocket? So we'll do average rate of change. So from four seconds to two seconds, the so height after four seconds, subtracted by the height after two seconds, okay? So really, these are just slope calculations. Whenever someone asks you to find average rate of change, it's just a slope calculation because slope gives you rate of change, okay? And because it's uh, two separate points, we're at, and uh, we're just averaging everything out. So, um, let's see, I believe the answer is zero, but I still want to triple check. So this is going to be 16, 16, negative 80, 80, 120, 42. Okay, this is going to be 2 squared is 4, negative 20. Uh, this is 60, 42. Beautiful. So it'll be 42 minus 42 over 2, which is zero. Zero? Ooh, let's see. Therefore, the average rate of change of uh, height of the rocket from two from two to four seconds is don't forget the units. Very important. Zero meters per second okay zero meters per second so is it saying the rocket's not moving is that what it's saying no it's just telling you that the height of the rocket after two seconds and after four seconds is exactly the same it's 42 meters high 
So if you just look at the beginning and the end, what ha what's the height of the rocket at 2 and 4 seconds? It's as if the rocket didn't move because the heights are the same. Okay, but clearly the rocket is moving. Okay, it's being, it's going, you know, launched up and being launched up in the air. So it is moving, but if you're solely looking or comparing the height of the rocket from two seconds to four seconds, then the rate of change is indeed zero meters per second, the average rate of change. Okay, so be careful. Uh, you really have to understand the idea of average rate of change. Yeah, it's just a focusing on the big picture. What's happening at the beginning? What's happening at the end? Um, I'll show you my my app that uh, a lot of students like this. So you know what? Let's do uh, stocks. So uh, this is the uh, Apple stock, and its price is right now three hundred thirty-eight dollars um, and eighty cents. So in the beginning, and I won't go too far, it's a dollar forty-one. You know what? Let's do one year. So uh, okay. So on August fifth, two thousand and nineteen, it was one hundred ninety-three dollars and thirty-four cents. And let's say you purchased that at that price. Okay. Do you really care what happens in the middle? Okay. Not. I mean, you might be checking the, the price of your stock, but at the end of the day, all you care about is really what your what price you're selling at okay you care about what the price you bought it at and what the price you sell it at okay you care about the the, the, the story at the beginning and the story at the end everything that happens in the middle is i don't want to say irrelevant but it's not nearly as important as the price you bought it at and the price you sold it at so that's what i like to think of when i think of average rate of change all right so let's do one more example so Sean weighs 90 kilograms before his 40 week weight loss program. After 40 weeks, he weighs 75 kilograms. So average rate of change. So the weight loss is uh, 75 and 90. And this is a time span of 40 weeks. So this is negative, two, negative 15 over 40. So about negative 0.375. Okay, therefore, the average rate of change of weight during the 40 weeks is negative 0.375 kilograms per week okay why is it negative because he's losing weight right he's losing 0.375 kilograms in a single week on average okay so in the beginning like the the the, the story is probably he lost a lot of weight in the first several in the first hour let's say 10 and then he plateaued okay but uh, this calculation calculation shows you on average each week he's losing 0.375 kilograms okay so it's really um, important that you note the difference between what's what what average rate of change means okay because in the next lesson we're going to talk about exactly what what's happening at an exact moment which is very different from what we're doing here okay um, so yeah this is average rate of change